All right, so I'm a little intimidated right now. I've got that voice going through my head that Jim talked about. You know, am I good enough to be here? What should I be talking about? Um, but one thing I did want to say to start, which I think is really important, and the thing that really struck me the most about his talk, which thank you very much, um, was the sig finding significance. And I think one of the things that has been why I do what I do is because it's a way for me to make meaning in my life. And I think that hopefully I can share that with you guys a little bit. So how did I start dealing with immunocompromised hosts? Initially, the talk was about transplant infectious disease, and I made a suggestion that we expand that, because while my story is about transplantation and dealing with transplantation, I think that there's so many more opportunities that are opening up related to other hosts that are going to have incredible stories about the biologics that are emerging in their treatments, and we're going to have so much more ahead of us than just transplantation. So how did I end up where I am? Um, right now I am in Cincinnati. I do take care of patients whose immune systems don't work almost exclusively. Um, it started with an idea um, that I really, really liked taking care of sick patients. I liked the challenges, I liked the clinical challenges, and I liked the fact that there was an opportunity to ask questions that no one else was yet asking. So it was really finding a niche, um, a place that I saw was gonna grow, and that this wasn't something that was gonna peter out, and it was something that was gonna constantly um, allow me to grow and expand my impact, but also my ability to help other people. Um, one of my fellows asked me, you know, what do you do all day? You know, because they see me in clinic or they see me on the hospital floor and they see me seeing patients and talking to patients, which is one thing that I particularly enjoy. Um, but I think that it was important for us to say, you know, what are the other things that we spend our time doing that impact? So, you know, my typical day isn't typical, and I think you'll hear that from a lot of us. There's not one typical day of what an immunocompromised host infectious disease doctor does. Um, the typical day could be patient care, and it could be directly touching patients, but it's also interacting with the teams that take care of those patients um, that you're helping. It's working on a more macro level, talking to them about protocols, talking to them about how to think about a situation. It's doing education with them, whether it be with physicians, with nurses, with advanced practice nurses who make up big parts of these teams now, um, whether it's with uh, bedside nurses or with just you know, the patients and their families. It's also delving into evidence-based medicine, especially when the evidence doesn't exist, um, and trying to figure out how to help create the evidence so that you can do the right thing for your patients. Um, and I think that that's something that has been an exceptional um, part of what I do. Uh, you know, when I have a question and there isn't evidence, you have to go out and make it. And that's really exciting to be able to say, I don't know, you know, what the epidemiology of something is. And I really want to know, you know, why all of these lung transplant patients have fungal infections. Let's, let's figure out what's going on there. Let's talk to the people. Um, you also get to help the teams make their patient care practices better. One thing I'm very interested in is process, and um, which is a little bit, you know, out of the ordinary, but I think there are some of us who really like process. Um, and talking with people about how, we, how to find the gaps in our process so that we can take better care of our patients. So there's lots of people who do quality improvement work. Um, it's something that I didn't know much about when I started. It was really young. Um, and coming to Cincinnati, I've had the opportunity to grow that piece of my repertoire and develop a new set of skills so that I can think about how we can intervene for a single patient, but also how to make the process better overall so that all the patients can have that opportunity. And being able to share that with other people and other institutions and gaining their insight into process and building that into our own programs and figuring out how to expand that is something that's been exceptional. Um, I think the fellows were surprised when they heard that I do research sometimes. I mean, people think about epidemiology and um, that's primarily a lot of what I've done, but I think that I have an incredible opportunity. I get to study how hosts and infections interact and impact graphs. I get to look at alloreactivity. I get to look at autoimmunity. I get to think about things in a very different way, and our patients are have constantly having new barrages of 
biologics thrown at them, and it presents all sorts of opportunities to look at the human immune system and how infections can impact grafts and how we can make that better in the future. Um, so, you know, I think that that's something that is really exciting. There's so many opportunities to, to work with people. I think Jim's point about team science is really important. Finding the people that you can interact with who share your passion, but who will come from a totally different place. So I have a team of transplant specialists who are organ specific that I work with, but it also includes basic immunologists. Um, it includes transplant immunologists. It includes um, you know, psychiatrists, people who are doing social science research. So we have the whole breadth, of, and we all talk to one another and think about how does adherence impact the, the issue of you know, um, the body's ability to make donor-specific antibody. These are things I didn't think about, and they certainly don't have much to do with infection. But they came along, and it's such an opportunity to, to touch something new and to think about things in new ways. I think the other thing that's really interesting about immunocompromised hosts is that it's an opportunity to work with such a diverse population of people, to build teams, to have the opportunity to work uh, with, within an institution or within a larger program, whether it be within many of the societies, that aren't primarily infectious disease focused. You get to interact with people who um, are so invested in making people's experience of having a transplant better, giving them the opportunity to live longer, um, giving them the chance to, to develop into who they are. So when you have an infant who has a transplant, it's very different than when you have someone who's 50 who has a transplant or 70 who has a transplant. Um, and trying to make that a better possibility for the future. And I think um, that's one thing that I find exceptionally rewarding. Um, so I guess uh, it's just the, the endless possibility. Um, my story was about transplantation, but um, I think that there's so many other stories out there in this area, whether it be in oncology or um, patients with IBD or rheumatologic diseases that are getting biologics, where you're going to have the chance to really learn firsthand how to take care of an individual patient and make it better for them, but the opportunity to bring it much more broadly of how to impact um, a much more global community um, and the process of working with people who do different things um, than you and really integrating with them is something that uh, is very rewarding. Um, now I have to check my cheat sheet to make sure I didn't miss anything, but uh, I, think, I think that's really, really it. I think that um, immunocompromised hosts are a whole new area. There is opportunity there that is endless and um, you know, you can start from you can start from a simple question, and my simple question was, you know, why are these patients so sick? And it can lead you down a whole pathway that brings you to, you know, human immunology, or it brings you to quality improvement, or it brings you to the capacity to build matrixed um, teams that have uh, unlimited capacity. So.